Alice has promised to show me something extraordinary. We're going to be looking at wine, and we're going to be taking a white wine, adding some red colouring into it, and making red wine, and then seeing if people can tell the difference. Do they think that that white wine is actually now red wine? Blimey, That's, that sounds like a bit of a jump to me. OK. How do we go about it? I think what we need to do is decant this into the jugs, mm -hmm. and then if we decant some red wine, because the important thing is, is that we make the red colour look as close as possible. So we've got to match it as, as, yeah. as well as we can. And to do that also, we are using a grape skin extract as the colouring. <laughs> The plan is to take our fake red wine and see if a group of experienced wine tasters can spot that it's actually white. We don't want to necessarily make it a very heavy one because we're looking at it to be you know, a fairly light red. Transforming the entire perception of such a well-known product with just a few drops of food colour seems like a pretty tough challenge. Oh, that's, that's believably a red wine for me. And I think that's a nice purple redness to it. What do you reckon? Yeah. Oh, yes, that's definitely red wine. Isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure. It smells like a white wine to me. I'd be surprised. But, but then we have the information yeah. at our fingertips and, and say, well, this, if one person is fooled out of everyone we speak to, that's enough. Our fake red wine is ready to go. It's time to give it to the members of a London wine club to see whether they'll be led by its taste or by its colour. Is it a single varietal? I can't, I'm not, you know? not saying. I keep expecting that Alice and I will be rumbled. But so far, everyone seems to be describing different aspects of red wine. Sorry, my writing is terrible. That's <laughs> all right. This was so difficult. These guys are using all the right words, but they're using them for the wrong colour wine. And would you like to come up and we can explain to you um, what it is that you've been drinking? Uh, the red wine you tasted was this. A Pinot Gris, an Alsatian Pinot Gris. It had some deep red food colouring added to it. You know, you think it's a red wine, you automatically, oh, OK, it's red. You know, from working in the wine trade, how we've been taught how to taste is the first thing you do is look at the colour. It wasn't warming. Like yeah, it wasn't wine. warming or mm. it didn't taste like I thought it didn't have any alcohol in it or something. Because I think that you all had a little hunch about it, but it seems that the colour alone shifted your perception <laughs> enough. And did you all, I mean, presumably you all believed it was a, a red wine? Yeah. 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 Colour is vital to food and it is what guides our perception of flavour and the taste of food. So E-number colours aren't just cosmetic. They're a vital tool for food manufacturers because they affect not only the appearance, but the way that we taste their products.